Military innovation doesn't always go hand in hand with aesthetic taste. And if there's one plane that's been accused of being unsightly, it's the F-4 Phantom II. In retrospect, we can say that the McDonnell Douglas ship was one of the masters of the air during the Cold War, and especially in the Vietnam War, but its status was not always the same. In today's video we are going to learn about its history, its particular design, and the qualities that ensured it a chapter in the military history books. The genesis of the F-4 dates back to 1953, when the United States Navy launched a petition to upgrade the McDonnell F-3H Demon carrier-based fighter. Although it is somewhat anticlimactic for our story, the F-4 prototype, then known as the Super Demon, did not win, but the F-8 Crusader. But with such a title, McDonnell couldn't ignore the future Phantom. The company chose to continue development of that Super Demon for the rest of the 1950s. The result of all this work was a long-range supersonic interceptor and fighter bomber. Initially, the F-4H was going to be named as Satan or Mithras. Under pressure from the US government, the plane was given a less controversial name, Phantom II. It first saw service in the US Army in the 1960s, but over time it was also added to the US Marine Corps and US Air Force, so that during the 1960s the Phantom was the backbone of much of the US forces. This, added to its international success and its particular appearance, earned the aircraft the place of icon of the Cold War. Many claimed that it was an ugly plane of disparate proportions, but time has proven that there are more important things than appearance. The F-4 Phantom II was a 19.2-meter long craft, with a wingspan of 11.7 meters and a height of 5 meters. But the dimensions are not enough to describe its pronounced nose, which, added to the location of the engines and the wing design, gave it an unforgettable appearance. From this came an endless number of nicknames, from Reno, or Rhinoceros, because of its nose, to doubly ugly and duff, because of the position of the wings and the two-seater format. Being a bestseller among Uncle Sam's allies, it also had nicknames abroad. German pilots, for example, called it Iron Pig or Flying Brick, always affectionately. Being a heavy and large machine, it needed a power plant to match. Two General Electric J79 GE17A turbojets were chosen, each generating a thrust of 53 kilonewtons in regular mode, and 79.4 kilonewtons when using afterburning. Its cruising speed was 940 kilometers per hour, and despite being a large aircraft with a maximum takeoff weight of more than 27 tons, it was capable of reaching a maximum speed close to Mach 2.23, an impressive mark in line with the supersonic speeds reached by Cold War ships. Finally, its radius of action was 680 kilometers with a flight ceiling of just over 18,000 meters. The F-4's greatest advantage when it came to dogfighting was its power, which allowed the pilot to engage in direct combat and withdraw at will. Although the F-4 proved somewhat prone to spinning when performing attack maneuvers, pilots reported that the aircraft was responsive and easy to fly at its edge of performance capability. The plane was designed to fire radar-guided missiles beyond the visual limit, that is, about 37 kilometers away between the Phantom and its enemy. This quality became more important over the years, nowadays close air combat is practically non-existent and BDR missiles are a must in any arsenal. On the other hand, the biggest weakness of the first F-4s was the lack of an internal cannon, which limited it operationally. U.S. military doctrine at the time dictated that combat at supersonic speeds should be avoided, so pilots were not taught air attack maneuvers. To compound the problem, the rules of engagement in Vietnam precluded long-range missile attack for the majority of the time. This changed over time, and the Phantom was able to show its best facet as a fighter bomber, interceptor, and in reconnaissance missions. 
A key factor was that, shortly after commissioning, Air Force F-4s began carrying SUU-16 or SUU-23 type external weapons pods, complete with M61 Vulcan 20mm Gatling cannons. Combat tests showed that while the externally mounted gun was somewhat inaccurate, it was still lethal against enemy aircraft and at a much lower price than missiles. Each aircraft has nine hardpoints, capable of carrying a mix of Mark 82 and Mark 84 bombs, the CBU-10 guided bombs, and even the B-2080X and B-61 nuclear bombs, among several other options. Additionally, the Phantoms can use SNEB 68mm rockets and AIM-9 Sidewinder and AIM-7 Sparrow air-to-air -air missiles. If you pay attention to the time it was produced, it's clear that the F-4's baptism of fire was over the jungles of Vietnam. One of the most important missions in which the Phantom II participated was Operation Beyond the Lookout, carried out on January 2, 1967. Also, on May 10, 1972, a Navy F-4 shot down three Vietnamese MiGs, which led its pilots to be the first aces of the war. In addition to the North American power, other countries that have operated the Phantom were Germany, Egypt, Australia, South Korea, Spain, Iran, Japan and Israel, which is why there have been F-4 Phantom IIs in practically all major conflicts in the second half of the 20th century. During the initial stage of production, the United States conducted a series of test flights with the aim of breaking records as propaganda. Among the main characteristics, the ascent speed, average speed in a 100-kilometer circuit and altitude stand out. In December 1961, using a water methanol injector, it reached an impressive speed of 2,585 kilometers per hour. Except on this occasion, production aircraft without special modifications were always used to set 15 individual marks in all. Five of those speed records were not broken until 1975, which is even more remarkable when we consider that many of the most important technological advances in military aviation took place during those decades. No one laughed at the appearance of the F-4 Phantom II again after these flight tests. Over the years, the F-4 was replaced by more modern aircraft such as the F-15 or F-16, but it remained in service long enough to take part in the Gulf War. Its North American run ended in 1996, although it remains in use today in Greece, Turkey, Iran, and South Korea. The next time you hear that the essential is invisible to the eye, you will surely remember this ugly plane that dominated the skies of the Cold War. This is how we come to the end of this episode. Thanks for joining us again, we will meet again in the next video of Military Aviation.